In this problem, we're going to solve this differential equation. So this is a linear differential equation. So to do this problem, we are going to start by writing down what's called the characteristic or auxiliary equation. So what you do is you basically look at the order of the derivative. So this is the third derivative. So you write r to the third power, and then minus six. This is the second derivative, so you do r squared plus 11. This is the first derivative, so it's r to the one minus six. And then if you think of y as the zeroth derivative, it's really r to the zero, so you don't have to write it. So then this is equal to zero. Really, really nice. Okay, so this is called the characteristic or auxiliary equation. So now what we do is we find the roots of this equation. I'm going to write it down one more time just to get rid of that one. It's kind of bothering me. So this is r cubed minus 6r squared plus 11r minus 6, and that's equal to 0. So I am not seeing like an immediate way to factor this in my mind. Uh, so I'm going to resort to something called the rational roots theorem. So the rational roots theorem says that you look at the factors of the constant term divided by the factors of the leading coefficient. So let's do that. Let's do that. So the factors of negative 6 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6. Always put a plus or minus because um, you could do silly stuff like this, you know, uh, if say it was 6, you could do 6 equals negative 6 times negative 1, or you even, even, even negative 6. You could do something like that, and so negative 1 and negative 6 are factors of negative 6. So always put a plus or minus over the factors of 1, plus or minus 1. So that 1 over 1 is 1, 2 over 1 is 2, 3 over 1 is 3, and then 6 over 1 is 6. So these are the possible rational roots. So once you have these, what you do is you test them using synthetic division. Let's start with the easiest possible number to test. Let's check the number 1. So to check 1 via synthetic division, you write down the number, and I write a little symbol like this. And then here, we write the coefficients of our cubic equation. So 1, negative 6, 11, and then negative 6. Then you draw a line like this. All right, so then you just take this number and bring it down. So boom, 1. Then you multiply. 1 times 1 is 1, and then you add these, and that gives you negative 5. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, and you add these, and that gives you 6. 6 times 1 is 6. You add these, and that gives you 0. This is really good, because whenever you get 0, that means that r equals 1 is a root or a solution to this equation. Okay, So again, start by writing down the characteristic equation, and then you have to solve it. Um, I couldn't see how to factor it, so I decided to use the rational roots theorem. So you look at factors of the last one over factors of the first one. And then um, you use synthetic division to check them. So we check one first, and it worked out really, really nice because we got zero. So that tells us that one is a root. All right, so that means that we can take this and write it as follows. So r cubed minus 6r squared plus 11r minus 6. And that's equal to... So let's see, we can write this as r minus 1. That's because 1 is a root. And then you use this to get the rest. So this is a 3, so you start at 1 less. So r squared minus 5r plus 6, okay? So always 1 less. So if this was a 4, you start r cubed. If this is a 7, you start r to 6. That's equal to 0. This, I believe, factors. So you have r minus 1, r, r. We need two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to negative 5. I'm thinking 
negative 3 and negative 2 will do it. So now we have three possible answers, which we knew one of already. And so we have solved our characteristic equation. Okay, so whenever you have distinct real roots uh, to the characteristic equation, the answer will be of the form y equals, in this case it'll be c1 e to the 1 times x, so just e to the x, plus c2 e to the 3x, plus c3 e to the 2x. So whenever you have distinct real roots, you just put them in front of the uh, in front of the x. So like if you had m1 and m2 as roots, it would be c1 e to the m1x plus c2 e to the m2x. And then another one would be c3 e to the m3x, etc. That's exactly what we did here, right? We have a 1 here. There it is. Now I'll erase it. The 3 and the 2. And so that would be the solution to the differential equation. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.